college. Are you thinking about college? College for your kids? Maybe college for your grandkids? How are you going to pay for it? How are you going to save for it? And how do you get your kids ready just to leave the house? Well, if you are in that camp, you have joined the right video today. Friends, I'm going to show you some tips and little tricks to help you get, get all of that accomplished. So I have a dear friend. We have worked together. We became friends by working together um, with a joint client. And I have known her for a good number of years. She's a CPA. Her husband is an attorney and they have one son. And she called me <laughs> one morning and said, Heather, I have failed as a mother. And, you know, I know we have all been there to where we feel like we're failing our kids. And I thought to myself, there's no way you're failing as a mother or failed your child and perfect kid, straight A student, got an academic scholarship to go to college and um, Eagle Scout, sang in the choir, great athlete, you name it. He's like the perfect kid. So I was having a hard time thinking, how did you fail as a mother? And I said, you need to explain. She said, well, I thought I did all the things, right? But he calls me the other day and said, mom, you forgot to teach me how to cook. I have no idea how to cook. And we all made a deal in the apartment. He's sharing an apartment with three other guys, freshman guys. They all lived in the same area growing up and they're all attending the same university. So all the parents got together and said, hey, let's get an apartment right across the street from campus and save some dollars. So that worked out great. They got together and said, hey, there's four of us, so one of us is going to be responsible for making dinner, or the four of them need to pick a day where they're going to cook dinner. So they would at least have four really good dinners during the seven day week. And they said it needed to cost between 10 to $12 because those boys are on a budget. Well, they basically told, Peyton is his name, that man, you cannot roll up in another week making pasta spaghetti and salad. Like, you can't do that anymore. We're tired of it. You got to come up with something different. And that's when he called his mom and said, yeah, mom, you didn't teach me how to cook and I don't know where to start. So <laughs> she's like, Heather, it was just the three of us. We had really busy schedules and I'm going to have to be on. Honestly, I, I stopped by the Fresh Market, which is the store here locally. They have a lot of freshly made things you can just take home and eat or heat up. She's like, that's what we did. And I didn't really teach them at all. I made, I told them how to make eggs and obviously how to boil spaghetti and put some jarred pasta sauce on it. But that's probably about it. And I said, that's not a problem. Well, she did direct him over to my channel and he's been utilizing some of the budget recipes. But that got me to thinking, there is probably a lot of parents out there that are trying to make sure that they check all the boxes and getting their kids prepared for college. Most importantly, how to pay for college. So let's start off with the first one that gave me the idea for this video, and that is getting your kids ready and how to plan budgets for their food. Because as you know, it is cheaper to cook at the house versus going out and buying it at a restaurant or fast food. So how do you start that? What is the process? So one thing that she did uh, very well is she did set up the kitchen. For a woman that didn't really cook at all at home, she did give him the pan, pots and pans, bowls and cutlery and all the things that he would need or they would need to be able to cook in the apartment. However, she did not give them at least a basis of spices to start with. And so if you are in that camp or if you have a child, grandchild, niece, nephew or loved one that is starting off on their own, not just college, but off on their own in their own place, you can start a little mini spice cabinet for them because that's something one, they won't think about and two, can be a tad pricey when you're on your tight budget. So here are some items that is great to have on hand when you're starting out and it will make anything taste delicious. So let's just start off the basis. These are the items that you can make anything taste delicious. And if you're in the South, these are pretty much in every cabinet pretty much in every cabinet. 
Now, I would love to know in the comments below um, if you're in the Midwest, over in California, Oregon, uh, and even up north. And hey, I got a few Canadians that watch as well as some people from Great Britain. What are the spices that are in your cabinet that maybe differ from this? That's like a go-to always. You'll always find it in your cabinet in your neck of the woods. I'd love to know. But here in the South, pretty much, you're always going to find the pepper. Most importantly, you can make pepper and salt. These two, just these two, and of course, you don't have to buy them the bulk, I buy it in bulk, but these two can make anything taste good. Now, if you want to step it up and make it taste delicious, then you want to add the onion powder and the garlic powder and the Italian seasoning. Now, friends, these combinations will step it up a huge notch. And then here in the South, at least in North Carolina, every kitchen you go to pretty much has this thing called seasoning salt. And it has garlic, onion powder, salt, paprika, and I think one or two other little spices in there. So you can get this in a smaller container um, for under $2 or this container, bigger bowl, for under $2. So it's a great seasoning that has a lot of punch and flavor in one container. So those are the seasons that will make pretty much any anything taste delicious. You want to start with an oil. Now I suggest a vegetable oil because vegetable oil can be used in a lot of different ways, baking and cooking, and it's pretty inexpensive. It's under three dollars. Now if you want to be fancy and give them some olive oil that's great as well, but for the cost this is a good one and it could be used in multiple ways. Also, you want to get them a non-stick non -stick spray, because let's just be honest, that is very helpful. And if you give them the vegetable oil, you might want to give them a olive oil or a butter. Uh, that would be some good flavoring uh, to their dish as well. All of these spices are great. Italian seasoning, season and salt, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, then some nonstick spray as well as a vegetable oil oil. This is all great items to start off a kitchen. And truly, you can get all of this for under probably $10 or $15. If you're just focusing on the spices, you can definitely get these for pretty much under $5 to $6 at different stores. A lot of them are a dollar, a dollar and nine cents. Some places you can find them for 99 cents or 95 cents. So this, I would say, at least in my area, that uh, a kid has grown up with all of these flavors and can make pretty much any any item that they're cooking taste delicious. Okay. And you know the person you're buying for, there's usually a condiment that they typically eat with just about everything um, when it comes to eating their dinners or lunches. And what I mean by that is like my youngest, she's a ketchup eater. She's the only one in fact in the house that really eats ketchup. She loves to have it with just about everything. So, you know, when she goes off to college and she has a kitchen or when she gets her own apartment, I'm definitely going to add a couple bottles of ketchup in there. Get her started off. With me and my oldest daughter, we're going to have some ranch. We always have ranch in the fridge. My husband's going to want hot sauce. So, in her buying those array of spices, you might want to buy their favorite condiment to get them started. And maybe a few other little spices, like, you know, if you, you know they're going to have takeout pizza, a lot of them are going to want some crushed pepper or maybe the shaky Parmesan. People love that as well. Set that up for them too. Just some things to get them started and that can help them make some delicious food. Now, what are some items that can be budget friendly? One thing that Peyton did find out is when he went to Walmart, he found out that he could buy an eight, a three pound bag of chicken breast, frozen chicken breast. And he thought to himself, well, if I buy a three pound bag of chicken breast, I can make three dinners out of that. Great thinking, I'm so glad. He just went around Walmart looking around to see what they had because he'd really never taken a tour around a grocery store before. That just wasn't a thing that he did or has ever done. So I applaud him for taking a little tour, figuring out what the grocery store has, what their options are. So with that being said, I thought I would do a recipe that would include that pound of chicken and budget friendly as well as healthy to help him on his way of having another recipe in his toolbox of budget friendly recipes. 
This is a Southwestern chicken and rice recipe. I learned how to make this recipe in home ec when I was in the eighth grade. Now I started with two tablespoon of oil. I put the pan on medium high and I added a pound of diced chicken as well as half of a medium diced onion to the pan. And then for seasoning, I did a teaspoon and a half of seasoning salt and pepper to taste. I let it brown, the chicken brown and the onion to soften. Once that occurred, that took about probably five to six minutes. And then that's when I added two stalks of diced celery and one whole diced jalapeno. I did take out the seeds and the veins of the jalapeno to keep it from being too spicy. Now I allowed the celery as well as the pepper to soften. That was about five minutes. And then I added a can of Rotel, which is basically diced tomatoes and green chilies. I mixed it well with the chicken and onions and let it cook for about three minutes. And that is when I added three fourths cup of rice. You could use brown rice, white rice, or any rice that you have. Now I like to allow the rice to brown just a bit in the pan, it develops a better flavor, at least I feel it does. And then once it's sauteed just a bit, you gotta watch it. I do turn it down to medium high, or actually, I'm sorry, medium, so that way the rice doesn't burn. Once the rice has had a chance to brown just a tad, I do put in about a cup and a half of warm water. I don't like to do cold water because that will bring the temperature of the pan down. So a half a cup of warm or hot water. And I wanna make sure to get the pan really bubbling, boiling as you can see, and then make sure all the rice is submerged by the water before I put the top on the pan. Now, once you see that it's boiling like that is when I close the pan up with the top, I turn the burner down to low and let it cook for 20 minutes uninterrupted. It comes, the rice comes out perfectly. Now friends, after I get to this, I, to this point, you can put cheese on it and serve it immediately, but I'm putting it in a casserole dish and topping it with cheese uh, to eat later during the week. Now, who, tell me in the comments below if you guys still have home economics in uh, the school systems. We don't have it here in the county that I'm in, uh, and I wish they still do, because that's where I learned to cook and to sew and all the things. Now, friends, as you can see, this turned out perfectly. If you want a healthy, delicious, budget-friendly dinner, this one's for you. So even though it's been 30-some years, oh, if it's been 30 some years since I've been in eighth grade, I guess, when I had that, it's still good and it's still budget friendly. If you buy all the ingredients and including adding in that $2.92 pound of chicken from the larger three pound bag, that's gonna come to $11.92. That also includes a bag for a side salad and a couple of Roma tomatoes to make a salad. So you can have the rice kind of casserole with a nice healthy salad and it's going to come and it will serve very comfortably for four guys for only $11.92. And remember, you only need half an onion. You'll have the rest of the celery, which means you can also use it in another recipe, which I will include below because I've made it on this channel before and link the video that shows how I made it. It You could use those ingredients for this chicken skillet chicken noodle skillet recipe, I believe it's called. You can use the rest of the onion, the rest of the cheese, the rest of the celery, and then of course, another pound of chicken that's in that big three pound frozen chicken bag into that recipe. And you can even add a loaf of the, you know, $1 French bread that you can get at Walmart. Use the cheese to make some cheese toast. That is a comforting, delicious meal. And I also included in that $9 and some change of a bag of frozen peas and carrots. So not only will you have the celery and the onions, but the peas and carrots, if you like it, to bulk up the nutrition and the veggie content there. So another great budget friendly recipe that has used ingredients uh, from one recipe, use it up to another recipe. So you don't have to waste it. All right, it. the last breakfast for dinner. Let's just be honest, everyone loves breakfast for dinner. I don't care who you are. I don't think I've met one person that doesn't like breakfast for dinner. And I would imagine being away from home 
that would be even better is having breakfast for dinner because that just to me seems comforting right comforting so i'm going to share with you a recipe that my sister-in-law did when we were on vacation this past summer and one thing i liked about it it was really easy to put together and um it was very hearty i ate one it's basically i don't know what you call it maybe a sausage egg biscuit cup muffin i guess uh but very simple ingredients easy to make lots of hearty ingredients and then you just pair it with some veggies and another carb and i think you're set you're set to go let me teach you how to make those let's call it a biscuit egg and sausage cup let's start with that this is my sausage and egg biscuit cups i did learn this from my sister-in-law this summer i took a pound of turkey breakfast sausage I browned it and then I'm taking all the grease out of it and then I'm going through once again to make sure that the sausage is nicely fine I don't want any chunks and I took eight eggs crack them I figured there's eight biscuits I'll do eight eggs and I'm seasoning them with some seasoning salt and some black pepper and I'm also doing a couple douses of uh, milk this helps make to me the scrambled eggs nice and fluffy now I'm going to take a cold pan, spray it really well, pour the eggs in it, then turn it on to medium. I find that the starting from a cold pan, heating it up, makes a nice fluffy egg. When you start seeing this white rim right there, guys, if you can see it, you know at the edge of the pan, you know that the bottom has set and you want to go in and under and then fluff it up. And that really makes a fluffy scrambled eggs, as you can see. Now, this does take a little patience. This took me about seven minutes to get to this consistency. And this is what I want because I don't want to overcook them. And you want to take the eight biscuits. They are grand biscuits. Stretch them out and then put them at each in each of the muffin cups. After you have accomplished that, you now want to take the sausage and put sausage in each of those cups. Now, to maximize the space, I am putting the sausage in each cup and pushing it down and out so that the sausage is getting into the dough. So that way I'm putting as much sausage as I can into the biscuit cups. Once you do put the sausage in the biscuit cups, then that's when you wanna add the scrambled eggs. And you do the same as you did with the sausage. You take the scrambled eggs and you really put a big clump in it and push it down and out so that way you are putting as much eggs on to, in them as possible once you've put all the eggs on there I did sprinkle a little bit more sausage on top because I did have some sausage left over and I'll tell you what I'll do what I did with that sausage uh, once we put this in the oven you want to preheat the oven to 375 the directions on the back of the biscuit package says four hundred but I have a metal pan and I want to make sure that the biscuits don't burn because the metal pan will heat up a lot faster put that in the oven for about 12 minutes until it's cooked and it comes out perfectly with the remainder of the eggs and uh, eggs and sausage I made tortillas I had enough to make three tortillas and I just did the sausage the egg topped it with some hot sauce and rolled them up. I put them in parchment paper because my husband says it's easier to heat up and it doesn't stick to the foil. It doesn't stick to the parchment paper. So that's why I choose parchment paper over foil. Look how they turned out, guys. It is packed full of sausage and eggs and it is filling and it is delicious. This is a must try for sure. As you can see, those biscuit cups um, will make eight. So depending on how hungry you are, really, if I'm thinking about those four guys in the apartment, they could eat two each. And you can pair it with easily a bag of frozen peppers and onions. You just saute that in a pan with a little bit of oil and, of course, lots of those delicious spices like pepper and salt, maybe some seasoning salt, some garlic, onion powder. Make that, um, even if you have some pepper flakes, that would be good too. And you can top it with rice because you purchased rice a meal ago for that chicken and rice dish. You can use that and put that over, um, put the sausage and peppers over the rice and then pair that with the biscuit sausage 
egg cup or you can use grits which is great because you can buy a box of grits for less than gosh two dollars and nine cents i think two dollars and ten cents you only need about half of those 12 come in there i would say probably five would easily fit i don't particularly like a grit uh instant grits because they're too gritty they're too gritty so how i make that better is that i actually put boiling water as much as you need whatever you need the amount on the back of the packet and i boil that with salt pepper some seasoning when it gets nice roll and boil i whisk in the grits and then i let it i let it start boiling again put the top on it wait about 20 seconds then turn it off and let it sit by for five minutes that makes a creamy grit and it doesn't say it tastes so gritty <laughs> on that that is a hearty dish as well you can spread those grits over a plate top it with those onions and peppers and then again add your biscuit egg sausage cups that's a hearty dish or let's just say if you don't want to make the biscuit egg dish all you have to do is really spread the grits on the plate top it with the onions and peppers and then fry up two eggs or scrambled up two eggs or really you could have three because you know it comes in a dozen for four guys that should come out to be three right or top it up you can put some smoked sausage and saute that with the onions and peppers you can do it on rice and you can put it on the grits there's a lot of different ways you can make this dish happy delicious and filling and it's all the ingredients whether you do the rice whether you do the grits whether you do just the eggs or the biscuit muffin cup things um, or the smoked sausage all of it comes under eleven dollars if you do just the smoked sausage grit or rice with the veggies that actually comes under seven dollars so that is a great deal and delicious most importantly healthy budget friendly menu so let's talk about the big the big one and that is how do you afford college where do you start whether a year from now or like for me eight years from now how do you start and where do you begin the one item that you might want to contemplate about is talking to your kids early very early about what their interests are and most importantly expose them to so many different careers so that way they're just not stuck on being a teacher or being a doctor or going into IT. Pause a moment. Hello friends, if you ever hear snorting, barking, yawning, or snoring during my videos, it's because of these two right here. The blonde is Blyden and the black one is Surrey Jane. They can be quite noisy. So if you hear any of that, just know it's my fur babies. They're just chilling out with me. Let's continue. So like I was saying, I think it's important to allow your kids to know of all the other things out there that they could build a career around, expose them. One parent I was talking to actually Googled careers that are needed in 10 years because of the, the rate of retirement and the rate that kids aren't going in and studying them and going into. That was, that was genius. They had a conversation with their kids with the list of careers that were needed in 10 years and they actually found something was in them and they were like, I love that. That's, that's so interesting. They went into that. When they got out of college, they got a job. Yeah, there we go. There's Blayden sneezing. They got a job immediately. So think about that. Find careers, expose your children to careers, contact people in those careers and see if they can talk to your kids. I think it's so much better to expose them to a lot of things to find what their interest in love is. Second thing, my really good friend, the one that I was talking to about their son that she failed as a mother, not teaching them how to cook. She did one thing. I was very I was very excited when she told me what she did with her son. Uh, they decided they could easily write a check. I mean, it's just, they had great careers. They have one child, very easy for them to write a check for college. But they said, look, he needs to function as an adult without us ever being there because it's just them. They have a small family. Once they leave this world, he is all he has. 
So they want to make sure that he's prepared and he knows how to survive. So they told them, they said, look, your job is to go to school, make good grades. Our job is to go to work, pay the bills and support our lifestyle. We will pay you for A's and we'll pay you for B's. What, what a great concept. That was his spending money. He didn't get an allowance. He, he earned it through making good grades. They paid him for A's, they paid him for B's, they didn't pay him for C's. So we actually started that with our kids. Uh, my 10 year old is obviously more excited about it than my seven year old, but that is, they see the value of working hard at school. And of course they, get, they are rewarded for it. Now let's fast forward that to an education and in college. She also said that instead of just writing that check into the university, she made him go out and take a student loan out for whatever dollar amount. Let's say it's $10,000. If you made an A, he gets a certain dollar amount. If you got a B, a certain dollar amount. And she did consider C's because college can be a tad challenging at times. All of them had a value. And at the end of the semester, whatever he got, whether it's all A's, that payment went straight back to the loan to pay it down. So he had skin in the game. I like that, had skin in the game. He had to think about, okay, I can't just party all the time and, you know, skip out for a C because I still have this debt I got to pay for. And I can get it paid to zero if I make all A's. I am definitely going to do that with my two girls. Third, now, this is also something that I learned from my friend as well. The one, you know, that thinks she's a terrible mother and she's not. They told their son, starting his freshman year in high school, that not only was his job was to make good grades, but his job was also to go out and find scholarships so that when he graduated from college, he had money to put in to his college education. So he did. I will link some websites below that actually list all the scholarships that your kids can apply for. He did that freshman all the way up to his senior year, and he ended up with about over $60,000 worth of scholarships, 60, over $60,000. And it started with like 500 here, a thousand there. He had a couple big pops of 5,000, 3,000, but that was his job. His job was to make good grades and find money for college. I love it. Love it. That's going to be a part of our college planning for both our girls. Fourth and final. I think there, for a long time, there was this thought process that your kids had to go to a four-year college to be successful in life. And that is not the case at all. I think what's important is to figure out what your kids want what they like and push them into that path and direction. There's nothing more defeating to really anyone that go through four years of school, rack up a ton of debt, and then do nothing with that at all. They go back to a trade school or community college to get a trade degree, and that is what they're focusing. If they would have identified that much earlier in life, they could have saved four years and the debt that they accumulated and be out in the workforce making money. So again, talk to your children. It goes back to the first. Find out what their interests are. Expose them to different careers. But most importantly, look inside their current education system. In the county we live in, the public school system has several different arenas you can go into. One, they have the traditional high school. You go, you learn, you graduate in four years. Then they have another segment of high school, which is an IB program, which is really geared to those kids that are going into a four-year school four-year college. Uh, more rigorous uh, academics, very focused on getting them to the four-year program. Now, then there's a third opportunity that's in our area, and actually there's two more, but the third is they have a community college route. So they start freshman year in high school, and in that four, the course of the four years are in high school, they're also going to community college and getting credits as well. So when they graduate from high school, not only do they get a high school diploma, but they also have their first two years of college completed. So when they go into college, they really only have two years left to get their four year degree. And the final one in our district, in our, in our county, they have what they have different programs. They have an aviation program um, and they have several other ones, but the aviation 
comes um, to mind first because it's at the high school down the street from us. And they have an aviation program where the kids go into the aviation industry. So they learn actually in simulators how to fly the plane. Then they learn how to work on the plane. When they graduate from high school, they get a job with an aviation company locally. We have a good number of them actually. The aviation companies are static because they have workforce. The aviation company basically signs a contract with them and say, hey, you work for us, you get a salary, and we also pay your way through school to get your degree in this industry, and then you come and work for us for a good number of years. What a fantastic program. They do that in aviation here. They also do it um, in uh, the manufacturing industry because we have a ton of manufacturing in our area they need workers and skilled workers and so those industries are going into the high school and providing programs so the kids can get educated get a trade get out have a job and another route for their college to be paid for so understand what's available locally for your kids in the counties surround it maybe that means that you move to that county because it supplies you better opportunities for your kids there's lots of ways to accomplish a college degree and getting your kids into that higher education. You just have to be a little bit thinking outside the box. And most importantly, you have to give them the opportunity to have skin in the game. Friends, thank you so much for joining me today. Make sure you stay safe. Most importantly, stay encouraged. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. And you know what, friends? And Peyton, if you're watching, I do have another video that gives you some budget meals um, for weeks to come. Thanks, y'all. Have a good one.